Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone. We are so happy here uh, to have Aline, and she's going to take us on her artistic journey as a mentee through this program, and I'm really looking forward to hearing her story. So take it away, Arlene. Oh, thank you so much, Dorothy. It's so great to be able to share this. Um, I will say right out front, I've never done a PowerPoint before, and I've never spoken to a group or given a presentation. So you guys are my guinea pigs. Um, forgive me if there are blunders, but um, I've really enjoyed this journey. Dorothy, thank you so much for being willing to accept me in it. Oh, I love you too. So I will start, I'll share my screen with you. And let me know, can you see my screen? Okay, good. Um, my presentation is called In Cracks of Time. And um, there's a reason for that. Uh, we will get there. Um, first of all, who am I? My name is Arlene Kustock. I'm 62 years old. I've been married for almost 43 years. Um, I have four children who are adults and seven grandchildren. And I'll take all that I can get because they're great. I love my family. Um, the entire time I've been married, my husband and I have also um, owned a business. We started it in our home in 1982 and have grown it to, depending on what's going on in the projects we have, we can have between 35 and 40 employees. Um, I run the business side of the business uh, and my husband has always been the technical side of the business. And so it's been a great journey for us. It's been a challenge. Um, it's never been easy uh, to raise your children and own a business that's actually in your home for a period of time. Uh, it's not now, but, uh, and then on top of that, I homeschooled my children for a while. So <laughs> there was a lot going on for many years. Um, I, I was create, I've always been creative. I learned to play the flute um, when I was five and I played for about eight years until going into high school. I didn't think it was cool. So I dropped it at that point and <laughs> picked it up again, um, went about 15 years later and started playing in church and was very involved in music and singing and things like that. But um, life has just been busy and hard and you know the struggle is real right everybody's got um something that that makes life very hard um so no one is unique some people have harder stories than others but um i just see that somehow god always gets me through <laughs> there's the road bumps in life um you know there's always that undergirding of strength that that he gives to me so i appreciate that my creative journey uh, oh, yeah, I, I began calligraphy because my, whoopsie, see, there we go. My daughter got married in 2014, and um, I decided I wanted to do calligraphy on her wedding envelopes. Oh, Lord. I have one photo. I, I should have pulled it up here, but I, I, um, I didn't really take any photos of that. Um, after her wedding, the fall after her wedding in 2015, my life intersected with someone who would become my best friend, and that is Nina Tran. She taught her very first workshop, and I happened to be in her very first workshop. And we just really became fast friends and have um, traveled on this calligraphy path together for all of these years. And I'm just so grateful for her influence um, in my creative journey. I also studied... Um, for several years under Michael Saul. And so I have a, a strong um, background in pointed pen. Um, I really never have used it in any kind of a professional way uh, for a career. I've done a couple of weddings and things like that. I usually um, produce greeting cards for all of my employees and my family. And so I look at those as little mini original pieces of art that I give to them. <coughs> Excuse me. But I have not really been out there as a calligrapher. Um, my career, my work career is, um, I have my electrical contractor's license. We own a security alarm company. So we put in closed circuit TV cameras and Berg systems and fire systems and things like that. So um, it's a very um, analytical world that I've been in on that side of my life. And so the creative side of me had to kind of 
get squashed down, right? Just, I didn't really have time for it. But once I discovered calligraphy, um, as I said in my little online snippet in your exhibition, it was like shaking a, a champagne bottle and somebody popped the cork and out came all of this creativity. And it sort of brought that side of me that I thought was dead back to life. And I have just really appreciated um, the community and the relationship I've had with so many great friends. Um, and it's just been such a blessing to me in a really unique way that I wouldn't have had. You know, I didn't think you could build strong friendships online, but heavens, I've got some great friends through virtual means, right? Um, it's such a blessing. So why did I ask to join Symbiosis? I saw what Dorothy did in Symbiosis too. And I was really impressed with the concept of uh, calligraphy as art and being shared with a larger audience because our community is very warm and friendly, but it's also very small. Um, and I really appreciate that Dorothy is pioneering um, I don't know how she's done all this in her beautiful little head. I just don't know where she came up with these concepts, but she's doing some amazing things. And so thank you for allowing me to say, hey, Dorothy, do you think I'm good enough to do this? And you were gracious enough to say, sure, come on. <laughs> I really didn't think so, but thank you for being gracious. Okay, so what does in cracks of time mean? Well, for me, it means, um, well, this last year has been one of the hardest of my life. I'm, I'm dealing with a lot of um, health issues with my mom. Frankly, I really think she's at, at end of life. I don't know if she'll ever be able to go home again. She's in skilled nursing and has been in and out of the hospital since, since September. And so that's been a big, um, a big challenge. Um, I took care of my help to take care of my dad when he had cancer a few years ago. And then he passed uh, in 2021. And I've been helping my mom and my uh, older handicapped brother as well since then. So it's been business and business problems and mom and whatever crisis comes up there. And sometimes I feel like I've, I've been thrown into a professional boxing ring with a boxer that's jabbing at me and I have no defense. I'm, I'm like a little kid standing there taking the blows. That's kind of how it feels sometimes. But um you know, one of the, the sessions that we had, uh, Carol was so gracious to me. She, she would listen to me um, be frustrated or feel like I wasn't doing a good enough work. And uh, one of the days I said, you know, I'm doing the best I can, <clears throat> but all I have are little cracks of time to work on my projects. And she said, Arlene, that's your theme. <laughs> that's the title of your, your stuff. And I went, okay. And I wrote it down and she was right. It, it really did make sense. It kind of explained a lot. Um, my, my mentor of, of course, is Carol DeBosch and Carol, I just can't thank you enough for your guidance, for your strength, for your encouragement and for not letting me quit. I mean, I really didn't think I'd be able to finish this, this journey. I thought that I would have to quit because I was getting nowhere for so long. And my awesome mentee buddies, Cosmos and Eleanor from, from Ireland, um, they're just encouragements and so talented, um, just so talented. So um, my, my, my title is Cracks of Time because of that, but my theme is actually clouds. Um, excuse me a sec, I need to move my, something on my screen. Okay. Um, I've always been really fascinated with clouds. I have thousands and thousands of pictures of clouds on my camera roll. And I see the, the creative hand of God when I look at clouds. I kind of imagine the sky as his canvas and the clouds as his brush strokes. Um, but in the beginning, I was really struggling to find, find what my theme would be or what my topic of, of the subject of all my pieces would be. Um, and Eleanor, one day says, uh, you know, she's like, oh, I've got the sea. It's really peaceful to me. There's so much meaning for me there. And Cosmos had his one day you will phrase that was so meaningful to him. And I had nothing. <laughs> I felt like the total loser in the group. Um, 
<laughs> and, but as we kind of went through that and I, and they, you know, it came my turn, I, I truly said, I don't know, I have nothing. And Eleanor says to me, suddenly she says, Arlene, you love your garden and you love nature. And at that point, it was like something out of a movie. I stopped being able to listen to what they said. And in my mind, I started thinking about clouds and I could hear them talking in the background, but I can't tell you what they said. And suddenly that just really crystallized in my head. And I thought, clouds, I just love clouds. And there's just so much I can do with them. Well, thank you friends for that encouragement and that guidance, because without that, I don't know, I would probably be stuck saying, I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> so that was great. Um, these clouds pictures are uh, ones that I have taken um, I split my time actually between my home and Cal in California. I live in Northern California. Um, but since half of my grandkids are in Idaho, I also go up there quite often. And so many of these, these photos were also taken in Idaho. Um, this is taken in my backyard in California. And I thought that looks like a feather to me, just across the sky and you know, we are in a, you can see how dry the hills are there. We don't get a lot of moisture in the air to get a lot of great clouds. So when I see them, I'm out there trying to take photos of them. So there's another one from the backyard, just some sunset photos are so pretty. Another one. Okay, don't tell anybody. This one I took while I was driving. Yes, I do that. It's really scary, but <laughs> I'll hold my phone, get out the window and just click, click, click it and hope that I get something. So that's where this one came from. This is also in Northern California. This actually was taken in Israel um, along um, the Sea of Galilee, uh, it was taken. This is also in Idaho, a friend sent this to me. Um, look at the, the power in those dark clouds. I mean, we, we take beautiful clouds for granted, but we need the rain too. And those storms can do damage, but they are also a gift from God to give us the water that we need. So I look at clouds in so many different ways. Um, here's another one driving home from Idaho. There's um, a storm on the horizon. You can see the rain is falling there. This one I took from my Idaho house over my neighbor's houses. And doesn't that cloud look like a big wave? I've just never seen anything like that before. Um, I loved it. This also was in Idaho. You can kind of see on the bottom right, you see a little bit of a tree and a rooftop. Um, this was a storm that was happening at night way down on the horizon. It was so far away that I could only see the, the clouds and I could see them illuminate, but I couldn't hear the thunder. I know that it was lightning over somewhere else, but I couldn't hear it, but I watched them light up and I sat outside in the dark with my camera on like a slow-mo setting for at least a half an hour, I probably took 200 photos just trying to get one that was illuminated and I, I captured it. So I was kind of excited about that. And then just more beautiful sunsets in Idaho. And look at the artistry in this one. Look at the brush strokes in that orange and the dark gray underneath and then fading to pink and fading to aqua. I just love it. Another one that my family uh, took on, on a road trip and sent to me. <clears throat> and this one was sent by a friend up in Northern California that he lives up in the mountains. And this image actually became um, the kind of uh, inspiration for my piece called The Heavens Declare. It wasn't until I started playing around with this piece of, or with this image that I realized I'd been painting clouds from the wrong perspective. I had been painting them as if I was looking straight at them or maybe even slightly looking down on them. And I realized that's dumb. We don't stand on top of clouds. We look up at them. <laughs> They're kind of a ceiling, like, like a ceiling in a room, right? And at that point, my perspective changed and I, I started improving my clouds, but they didn't get there at first. And I'll show you the, <laughs> the beginning process. Um, Carol asked us to write out our goal. And I said, my goal is to find my authentic voice as an artist, to trust that that voice is good enough and beautiful enough to share with others, to develop my confidence and skills to the place I can create with freedom and abandon, 
unhindered in my spirit or by my lack of skill or proficiency. I desire to create beauty that encourages others and glorifies God. <clears throat> Carol, Carol encouraged us to play with some new things. The ruling pen and paste paper primarily for me. And then of course, painting clouds, I had to explore acrylic paint, which was completely new to me. I had only played with watercolor. So Carol has us playing with the ruling pen and this is just a small sampling of, um, of all of the paper I wasted, but it was a, an enjoyable process. However, I'm a pretty traditional type of person. So this was actually my favorite. Uh, it's a definition of what a goat rodeo is. So goat rodeo, when things go totally, unbelievably, disastrously wrong, and there is nothing in life to do but sit back and watch the train wreck. Um, we've enjoyed thinking about that at work because <laughs> sometimes there are days like that. <laughs> uh, Carol introduced me to paste paper and I was smitten. It's essentially a combination of a type of wallpaper paste, uh, wallpaper paste powder, water and acrylic paint. It is very textural and fun to play with, yet it dries completely smooth. So it's perfect for creating an interesting background for your calligraphy. I'm a complete novice, but enjoy this type of painting and will definitely be doing more of it in the future. Carol suggested I look at the work of an incredible artist named Madeline Durham, who is famous for her paste paper. Wow, what an inspiration, but I won't show you her work here or you would just laugh at mine. And I'm serious, <laughs> she's amazing. So these are the first experiments that I did, um, just playing around with the paste paper, um, the paste paint on paper and seeing what happened. It's kind of interesting. And then I decided, well, can, what can I paint with them? Can I paint flowers with them? The one on the right, top right, the pink flowers became a greeting card. Um, I think it's interesting though, when you look at the strokes on the, the flower on the bottom right. Of course, this is just dabbling around with it. It's nothing special, but look at the texture you get. Look how those brush strokes look like veins in the petals almost. So much fun. <clears throat> and then I just, I did a couple of examples. Uh, I'll be teaching this in my uh, demo. I'll be talking through some of this, the techniques of this and how to make it. Uh, did a couple of quick little landscapes, nothing special, little seascape. And the next piece is actually Carol's. Isn't that beautiful? Carol DeBosch, the, the master there. She just, she, she loved, I love this piece. She loves it. Um, this calligraphy, she said, is not done. It's done digitally because there was no way she was gonna write on this piece. And I, I know what that feels like when you create something beautiful that you don't wanna wreck. So thank you for sharing that, Carol. Um, I started playing around with acrylic paints for the first time in my life. Acrylics are very different than the watercolors I was used to. In addition to learning a new medium, I also had to try to teach myself how to paint clouds. I painted and painted, and then I painted some more. I painted a lot of really boring clouds over and over and over again. I painted with acrylics. I painted using watercolor. I tried to paint big. I tried to paint small. I sketched. I tore paper into clouds. I used pastels. I used crayons. I tried to add text. I was very unhappy with everything I was producing. There's a, a sample. <laughs> really boring, right? Just kind of, you know, somewhat okay, but nothing that I could use as a project. And I was learning. Um, I, I've really enjoyed learning how to paint clouds, but they're really one of the most difficult things to paint. There are so many colors and so many different dimensions to clouds that <laughs> had I known, I wouldn't have chosen them. <laughs> they're, they're hard. Um, Carol told me that I needed to have the words become an inseparable part of the image, not just words stuck on an image. Uh, that's really hard to do with clouds and I felt really stuck. Uh, Cosmos made a great suggestion and said I needed a focal point, but I just couldn't make sense of these concepts and I felt like a failure. I didn't know how to ask for help in a way that brought results for me. Carol kept encouraging me to keep creating, making messes, but not to give up. She told me that I'm the client and uh, I'm the only one who needs to like my work. I kept trying anything that came into my mind. All right, get ready for some really dumb stuff, guys. 
This was the back of a photograph that I have hanging, had hanging in my, uh, yeah, everybody's turning their head. <laughs> like, which is, which way is up? I tore the back paper off of a canvas and stuck it down on my counter just because I had no other large paper and just started playing around with it. I literally tore paper up and, you know, I tried to make the paper look more like clouds, but um, it, it's very childlike. <laughs> This one was very literal, <laughs> words and clouds and clouds and words, and even better, yes, even more literal words that are <laughs> clouds, right? Ah, oh, I hated everything I did. I was so frustrated with myself. This next one kind of started getting me a direction. Uh, I actually wet the paper down and then blindly scratched the letters in to the wet paper. So I couldn't really see what I was writing. And then when I put the watercolor over the top of it, the letters, you know, kind of showed. Um, this, you'll see something that looks like this in one of my finished pieces. Uh, then friends and family had to endure getting cloud themed birthday cards and greeting cards. <laughs> So here are just a couple of those. This one actually I enjoyed. I think it was kind of fun. I played with texture and um, you can see how I took the uh, acrylic paint and um, made that kind of textural. That was fun. And this one uh, is also illuminated with something called um, golden interference paint. And I'll also be talking about that in my demo next week. I decided that I needed to end the madness of doing the same things over and over and try something completely different. I decided to go a little more abstract <clears throat> and kept playing with acrylic paints. I painted a lot of backgrounds, but I could not seem to write words on what I painted. I was still so lost. I didn't have much extra time and what I produced still couldn't be used for a project, but I kept painting, playing and praying for help. This was as close as I got to put in any words on a project, but it's really just a vellum sleeve. I painted a background and was trying to figure out some layout and then I would have written it on the, the piece, but I never got there. It just stayed as a vellum sleeve. So this background I painted um, on a half sheet of watercolor paper with acrylic paint and overpainted it with golden interference paints. And I'll give you an example of um, what happens when you shine light directly on that interference paint. It just glows, comes to life. I think it's the most magical stuff. I'm totally in love with it. And here are a couple more pieces. <clears throat> This went on for months though, all of this dabbling and playing around. And then in early July, Carol uh, forwarded an email from Randall Hassan to me announcing a week long retreat that he was hosting uh, online called Focus on the Sacred. I immediately signed up for, for this thinking that it would be a good time for me to be able to dedicate a week putting the final touches on my projects. The retreat was Octo October 2nd through 6th, but little did I know um, how greatly that week would impact my artistic journey. I was supposed to have had all three of my projects completed by October 28th, and none of the concepts or prototypes existed at that point. I had zero projects ready, ready at the beginning of October. I was really stressed out about this, but kept trusting the process and didn't give up. The week, spent, <laughs> the week spent with Randy and the other women during the retreat was so special. There was a spiritual element that bound us together as we explored the theme of illumination. We studied lots of historical examples, but also discussed illumination in a much more abstract way. To be illuminated can mean many things. Not all illumination is done with gold leaf. Randy introduced us to these golden interference paints and they become my new favorites. They were, uh, they were also used in all three of my projects. Thursday during one of his lectures, I, I was painting and doodling along while he was giving, giving a talk and I, I painted the following painting. At first, I didn't think much of it, but you will see how this became one of my projects. God used this week to calm my soul, rejuvenate my heart, and set my feet back on the right path art artistically. I'm so grateful to Randy for his encouragement and kindness to me. So this is the painting I just did quickly during class. <clears throat> 
The next morning after the retreat ended was our group's mentor meeting with Carol. I was overflowing with excitement from the retreat and showed the group that cloud painting. Carol suggested that I tear it up and write in the cracks created between the torn edges, carrying out the theme cracks of time that we had previously discussed. I couldn't tear that original, but made a black and white copy and tore it up. That was kind of like Carol can't tear, couldn't write on her, her piece. I just couldn't tear this up. It meant too much to me. I didn't think it was great art. I just, it, there was so much meaning from the week tied to it that I just couldn't tear it. Um, and then, then I sat down and all the months of effort, frustration and the stress from life's pressures hit me all of a sudden. I desperately needed to write out all of the thoughts that were tearing through my heart and mind. I wrote out a list of words that described my feelings. They were all negative words. I immediately, I was immediately struck with the truth of God's word and that he has the answers to help me in all of those feelings. And that's how not good enough was born. This is the first piece where I copied the photo, tore it up and kind of started writing um, the words out in versals. Versals were something else that Randall had taught us during the week. And so those were fresh in my mind. And I took the purple photo down to the FedEx copy store and had it copied more in a, a black and white um, and then started writing the words on it. Afraid, weary, downcast, weak, broken, and not good enough. Not good enough is kind of a theme in my life. I always feel like I'm not good enough for, for so many things. But I realized that God's word says differently. So um, instead of being afraid, I read God's word to say, don't be afraid for I am with you. And then he says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Um, why are you downcast, O oh my soul? Um, why are you in turmoil, hope in God? Um, my power is made perfect in weakness. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. And then the last one, not good enough, doesn't have a direct word I can pull from a verse. But this verse has always been one of my favorites. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. He knows my heart, you know. <clears throat> and then the morning after that Saturday, after our mentor meeting, I woke up really early and very suddenly had uh, a design concept in my head. I jumped out of bed and I went to my studio to sketch out the concept. This was the beginning of my largest piece titled Alpha and Omega. However, before I was brave enough to begin painting on the large canvas, I cut a smaller piece to practice on. I'd never painted on practice, I'd never painted on canvas before. And after my frustrations of painting clouds uh, with acrylic paints, I decided to try a smaller piece just in case it was a disaster. This is how my piece, The Heavens Declare, was born. This piece came together very quickly because I had been painting the, with this concept in my head from the beginning of this journey, as you saw in my earlier attempts. So this is The Heavens Declare, The Glory of God. Um, I used a little bit of interference paint in all of my pieces. So <clears throat> if you shine the light on it in a different way, you'll see some purple and blue in the clouds. It's really hard to see here because they were done very, very subtly. And then the letters have gold over them. Suddenly I had gone from zero concepts, project concepts to working on all three projects at the same time. <laughs> Remember that morning that I woke up um, with the sketch idea for the piece titled Alpha and Omega? Well, here's my sketch. I went and I just wrote it out with a pencil. And in the background, there's a little bit of, um, oh, you might be able to see there's some colored pencil in the background. But that was my original concept. And this next really ugly painting, don't laugh. But it also, I, after I drew that, I just kind of went crazy with paint brushes, didn't draw anything out and just threw this down <laughs> to see what might work or not. Now this is the canvas and this is something like, oh, uh, how long is this piece? 
I don't know, I think probably almost 20 inches, 18, 19 inches by about 12 or 13 inches wide. So it's, it's quite large for me. I've, I've been the girl who did greeting cards, remember, <laughs> that, are, that are this big. So to paint something this size to me was huge. <clears throat> Um, after the background and then uh, putting the glow in of the sky, this is supposed to represent uh, the night sky being pierced, right? So as the alpha and the, and the omega, there's some biblical references to that I'll talk about at the end. <clears throat> I painted uh, the alpha and omega symbols in white. And then I ended up not taking any more photos in between, I'm sorry, uh, painted in the clouds. <laughs> uh, painted over the um, alpha and omega and in the clouds with interference paint as well and down in the rays going down and up are also streaks of blue and red interference paint so this next photo will kind of help you see how the the, the change happens when you light these things up isn't that amazing interference paint's just amazing to me um, I have a video, it's going to be a little shaky, but this was my video to demonstrate what happens when you turn the lights on, on this stuff. Isn't that crazy? So it's just going to zoom in a little bit closer. Um, you can see how the rays start showing. And then up in the clouds, you'll see some gold up in the corners that, that as you move around, it illuminates itself. And then this was my final piece. <clears throat> in the end, I realized something very important. I always thought, um, well, you know what? I'm reading the wrong, <laughs> the wrong notes. Uh, this is a highly symbolic piece representing the return of Christ to the earth at the end of the age. Jesus tells us in the Bible that the, he is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end of all things. Notice the scale of the mountains at the bottom. They represent how, sm how small man really is. And the biggest, strongest things on this earth are minuscule compared to the living God. Of course, the cross represents the sacrifice of Jesus with his own body and blood to pay for the sins of man in order to reconcile us to himself. And the verses that I wrote, hold on, I'm sorry. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, oh, technical difficulties. The verses that I wrote here, you can probably read a little better. Behold, he is coming uh, with the clouds and every eye will see him. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord. Lord God, who was and is and is to come, the Almighty, surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. So um, in the end, I realized something very important. I always thought to be mentored meant to have someone teach you their trade, like an apprentice learns from a master. That may be true for some mentorship programs. However, in this case, mentorship was having a friend by your side, pushing you, pulling you, encouraging you, and guiding you to work really hard at digging deep within yourself to find your authentic voice. It can be painful, but the reward uh, is in having the confidence to, to call myself an artist. Thank you, Carol. I love and appreciate you. Thank you, Dorothy, for giving me the opportunity to grow. Um, thank you, Cosmos and Eleanor. I, don't, I ran out of space here. I didn't type it in, but you were awesome encouragements to me. Thank you so much. Thank you to my family for supporting me through these dark and difficult times. And thank you, Lord, for giving me the strength and guiding me through this past year. So that is the end of my presentation, and I will stop sharing. Bravo. Well done, Aileen. Thank you. That is so awesome. Cool. Very cool. Um, is Carol here? Carol, do you want to say something to Arlene? Okay, but before before Carol comes, I just wanted to, you know, what you shared at the end about mentorship being somebody helping you to, to, to come alongside you as you dig deep. So Arlene, when you were sharing, I had this image in my mind of somebody digging a well. And, you know, when, when you are digging a well, you go through a lot of muck and a lot of mud. And even when you hit the groundwater, it comes up dirty. 
<laughs> at first, True. right? Yeah. I mean, all the junk, everything has to come out, you know, and then you have to keep digging through the junk, through the mud, through the whatever, you know, and 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 then you will hit the the, the groundwater where it comes up clear, and 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 that that is the process that I see you were going through because sometimes mm -hmm. art can be very painful because you are digging deep, and there are layers and layers of insecurity. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, those voices that tell you, you know, who cares about what you're making anyway? You know, it's <laughs> and then, it's just like, not good enough. That's yeah, it's terrible. Not, it's terrible. <laughs> and who who do you think you are to be making yeah. this? You know, and to try. No to one wants to see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I hear that, and and I I think it's so relatable. A lot of people are nodding their heads. <laughs> and I feel like it's a it's a real um it's a process that many artists go through they continue to go through even after they become like successful because every new well that you dig you do have to process a lot of those things but well, it's vulnerable you've got to be very vulnerable oh, yeah. and you're That's sharing good. part of yourself that you don't you don't know if anybody else is going to like, but it's so personal Yeah, and it's absolutely. real. And you're like, okay, here's my little baby. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. So I think what Carol said about you are the client and you, yeah. you please yourself. I think those are very important things to remember. And I, and I think you have done well to not give up because, you know, at the end, right. When I saw your heavens declare not good enough and the alpha omega, I feel that it is so you. You know, nobody else could have made that but you. You know, it brings together all the strengths of your love, uh, your conviction, you know, your love for the word. Uh, it, you know, and, and, and that is just, I think it's precious, Arlene. And I really thank you for sharing with us with such vulnerability, you know, from the depths of your heart, this journey. I think it's so important for all of us to understand that this is what it takes, you know, to, to cross over, I mean, to, to dig deep and to face your fears I, I'm just so so very proud and I know Carol is too so Carol would you like to respond to what Arlene has shared well I got to work with Arlene yesterday so I saw this a day ahead of time and you just did a beautiful job of articulating your entire experience and <clears throat> you do have to look at you have to do the ugly stuff and you have to put it out there and you do it again, and then pretty soon, oh my gosh, it's not so ugly today. I'm starting to like this. Yeah, but it didn't happen soon enough for me. It happened all at once. <laughs> like, yeah. boom. Zero it to was a boom. Yeah. An hour. <laughs> it was, yeah. Yeah, so it was. Kudos to Carol for not, you know, not giving up. <laughs> and, and, and to tell you, tell you to not give up and to keep pushing. For not kicking me off the team and saying, get out of here. <laughs> no, I always knew, Arlene, you would do it. And that you did it at the last minute just makes me crazy because I can't <laughs> work at the last minute at makes all. Me crazy too. <laughs> <clears throat> but um, you did it. Thank you. I couldn't yeah. have done it without you, though. Thank you. Well, it was a delight to be part of that. Definitely. Yeah. And, and <clears throat> I, I've I see the Arlene at the end of the journey and the one at the beginning. Uh, you have really just flourished, you know, and I hope that you will carry on. Mm -hmm. you know, and to, to I will. And find new wells, you know, and, and just, yeah. Not, um, I mean, yeah, greeting cards are great, you know, but, but I think there's more inside of you than greeting cards that wants to come out. Um, and, and we're here to cheer you on. Go thank you thank you so much yes. look at, look at Mar it. maria is saying go for it yeah <laughs> yeah uh, uh i would like to ask um anina you know you were very much a, a source of inspiration for, <clears throat> for arlene and you know would you like to share your re reactions response yeah i I feel very lucky that Arlene called me many times to to that on your shoulder. <laughs> in that part, but now that you mentioned it, um, yeah, I wish we had really great conversations as we always do. And she, when she just when she had gotten started, she she asked me about my experience, and I said, you know, 
really hard. I had the same expectation as you, Arlene, where I thought I was going to work with you, Kimi, and she's going to teach, she's going to tell me what to do, which <laughs> did not happen, you know? And so I was, I had to lead myself, but she was right next to me. Anytime I wanted, I could just, hey, Kimi, what do you think of this? And I, I didn't realize that until I started going. And I felt like you too, you were saying that Cosmas was doing his thing and Eleanor was doing her thing. And you're like, Oh, you, you felt a little. I'm like, a loser in the group. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, yeah. "Oh, he's so sure you Kimi's gonna kick me out too." But <laughs> uh, I, I think once you started to rely on yourself and listen to your own self, then the visions became clearer. Uh, when people give you ideas, it sounds like a good idea, but that's their idea is based on their experience and what they're doing and it it might not go with with who you are and so it's like carol was saying earlier before the recording this is so uniquely you and nobody could have produced that and it's and it's yeah. hard for a mentor to tell you what to do because they're not you they can only help you and guide you and um anyway. and push 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 <laughs> well and that's where I said too I didn't even know how to ask for help I couldn't figure out why I was stuck or where I was stuck or even how to ask the right questions to get unstuck and I just had to keep keep trying and keep trying and and um, eventually you know things happened happened quickly but yeah don't give up keep keep yeah. persevering I, I think that Carol gave very good guidance, uh, you know, in directing your attention towards Randall's uh, retreat. That was so. I, I think that is very good guidance, and this is something a mentor does because she understands where, you know, she kind of sees your trajectory mm -hmm. and then finds like, hey, maybe this kind of resource is very helpful. And I thank Carol for that. I mean, that's awesome because it clearly was very catalytic in your journey, and uh, I think if had. You know, had Carol not brought this to your attention, you would have missed that opportunity, I think, of that week. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I would have missed a lot. Um, Rand Randy's great. I love him. I'm really looking forward to meeting him at Letters and meeting Carol in person at Letters, California. <laughs> so excited. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, when I reflect on all the different mentorship groups, right, and I see like Carol is very different. All the mentors are very different in their approach, you know, like... Uh, like our mentors from the 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 Spanish speaking countries tend to be very warm and relational and like let's meet forever let's hug let's group hug and uh, we'll meet you know every year every month and it's it's just a very different approach from you know with I see that Carol is there to be like she's she's the drill sergeant you know she's gonna get you through this uh, ordeal and come on let's do the drills let's get through these trenches you know. And she's with you in the trenches. So I, I just so appreciate, Carol, that, you know, what you've done for your group. Uh, I honor you for your mentorship. And I thank you thank for you. giving them all this help and uh, support, encouragement, and getting them off their asses. <laughs> no, my uh, yes. <laughs> I don't recall ever saying that. But, um, she says you told her that in one of your mentor meetings. So it must be true. Oh, maybe I did, but that's right. I never said it to you. You, you didn't tell us directly to our faces. Right. You just okay. hold it behind our backs. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think it, it's just a different flavor to the mentorship and I so, so appreciate it. Very nice. Yeah, thank you. Does anybody else want to ask questions of Arlene or, um, you know, just jump in because we don't have that many people anyway. So just unmute and just let's just chat. Any questions for uh, our mentor, Carol? Any questions for Arlene or comments? No. Nope. Um, Maria, I, I cannot hear you. Night, you muted. Look, it's been such a great journey. I really enjoyed that, Arlene. And um, to Thank see you. the beginning and the end result, it just it, it, uh, gobsmacking, I'd say. <laughs> It's that. fant it's fantastic. And I um and to see you enjoy the journey and going through the agony, um, oh, that's part of it. I'm I'm going through, I'm doing a big circle at the moment and I'm doing steps out from that journey. And I can fully understand that because sometimes you just have to step out 
and explore that thing you didn't think was really good. And then you go, oh, there's another facet to that. So, and then you can step back into the original journey. And that's what's so beautiful about um, the calligraphy and being in this group. And um, that's why I always support this group because if you learn a little bit from someone else's experience, it will come back to you later. And you go, oh, I remember that. So um, I will continually support everybody in this group. It's fantastic. And thank you, Dorothy, for making it real. Thank you so much, Maria. That's very good. Thank kind. you. We love to have you. I mean, it's always an encouragement to see you. Okay, Lana is saying something. Beautiful work, Arlene. Looking forward to meeting you and Carol at Letters. Yes. And she also loves taking photos while driving. Oh, dear. Uh -oh. <laughs> Okay, well, we're going to be renting a car together at some point. So one of us has to be doing the photo while the other one drives. <laughs> That's cool. That's good. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, okay. She says yes. All right. Anyone else has comments? Well, see. I love the textures. I love the fact that you explored both Carol and Arlene this texture um, that sort of gave a whole other level to your artwork and uh, oh, and also the challenge of having to to look at what came out of that to to then you know strategically sort of place what you thought um, your vision or your words would be and and I also thought of you as a medieval scribe as well you know <laughs> writing you. you know putting out the words of God to others and uh, maybe that, you know, that sense where you're going back and you had to prepare your, your canvas, like a scribe would prepare the parchment. And then from there, you know, you've built up. And I, um, I think that's part of this whole paste oh, paper. And I love that. Thank <laughs> you. Interference, uh, paints, et cetera, yeah. you know, the, the light that's there. So I hope that you begin to keep exploring that. And um, <laughs> you and I Carol, will, thank you. you know, she might come up with a whole other process <laughs> that engages calligraphers in making marks, right? Thank um, you. Carol, that's your expertise, but <laughs> it's good to see that it's been passed, you know, passed on and look at what we've right. got to see tonight. Wow. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah I did I did I agree with uh Susan I did think about the medieval scribes when I saw your Alpha Omega oh wow yeah. this is like it's it's got a certain majesty to it you know the, the feeling is very majestic and uh it reminded me of the ancient uh like the manuscripts very nice very good thank um, you I have, I have one of my sons is in the lives in the Netherlands and he what what word did I mean? He's the cerebral one. He's like it's iconoclastic. <laughs> In other words, it's kind of iconic, right? Using sort of like the 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 uh, medieval icon icons and iconography. Yeah, Arlene, have you had a chance to share any of the art with Randall? No, not really. Um, I I sh I did ask him uh, um, early on about the uh, Alpha and Omega piece. It was really rough at that point, um, and so I I I think I may have shared. Actually, I did share with him part of the uh, the uh, not good enough piece, the black and white one. So yeah, I was going to after this presentation, I was going to send it to him and let him see yeah, it. Yeah, do the, do that. I think he would really really like to know again that his teaching. Has affected you mm -hmm. huge influence I love to hear that yeah yeah, yeah it was like having two mentors really because <laughs> i would also ask him these little questions about acrylic paint and i had taken his acrylics video class and kind of mm -hmm. learned a little bit about that but he kept saying oh, i don't paint like that arlene i don't paint like that i kind of paint like their watercolors and i'm like okay <laughs> <laughs> i'll try <laughs> yeah that was the other thing, I mean, that you came away with a brand new set of tools, you know, yeah. ability. I mean, you have now acrylics, interference, pain. Uh, I think that's wonderful, you know, to, to, to have learned all that in such a short time. And yeah. then to be able to see a point of breakthrough starting. I think that's really, I mean, you, you should be proud of everything that you've accomplished. So thank oh. you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> good, good. Well, I guess that comes uh, brings us to the end of the presentation. I'm going to stop the recording. Thank you.